All righty. Good day, my friends. My name is Tracy Repchuk, and I'm the host of Reach Millions TV, an entrepreneurial lifestyle and learning channel, where I will educate and introduce you to some of the greatest powerhouses in their fields. Now, as an entrepreneur for over 37 years, I've had the good fortune to appear in Forbes over 27 times, speak in 39 countries, appeared on NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox, won awards from the Senate, the Assembly, the White House, and President Obama. I've written nine number one international best-selling books, and along that journey, I reached millions with my message, and I know how important it is for you to do that too. So I wanted to show you how with specific trainings and by introducing you to the people that can help you to find more leads, make more sales, and reach millions with your message. You can find out more about me at tracyrepchuk.com and reachmillionsacademy.com. Today, I am joined by the amazing Michelle Jakobic. Now, Michelle is an expert at helping you master your vision, your mindset, your money, and your growth. In addition uh, to her education in insurance and finance, she transformed her own life as a 23-year-old drowning in a sea of debt to a businesswoman who, with her partner, bought, uh, brought the company that they worked for at the age of 29 from 600000 to over $12 million in sales a year. So it is my great honor. Michelle, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Trace. It's great to see you again. You too. I know it's so fun to do stuff like this. Um, so I want to go back to quite frankly, where many people are today when at the age of 23 years old, you were drowning in debt. So how did you get out of that? Well, um, I had to actually get really honest with myself, right? <laughs> um, I had left out of the home at 19 years old with this huge sense of adult confidence, right? Big dreamer, vision board at age 20, um, going to make it all happen. And for me, um, you know, the universe aligned with that by sending me my first credit card lines of credit opened up, right? I, back in the day, it was those payday loans. And I just thought great confirmation, right? That I'm right where I'm supposed to be. And I grabbed at all of those things. And I leaned into creating from a place of all of the stuff that I wanted. Um, and it didn't matter how I got it. And I found myself a couple of years later, awake, drowning, literally drowning. Mm -hmm. And the way that I found my way out was quite honestly, reconnecting with my grandmother's way of handling money, which in my mind was sort of scarcity driven, right? The way that I looked at it was like, wait, why would we save for a rainy day? Why would we put X number of dollars a week into a vacation club or a Christmas club? That to me felt like penny pitching. And I wasn't going to do that in my world. And so the way I did it was I rolled back I got clear. I had to understand that I wasn't coming from a place of financial maturity. I was coming from a place of financial immaturity. And luckily for me, I was taught about money early on. And at the same time that I was digging the hole, the debt hole, I was also working, working for a financial services firm. So I was learning about the power of compound interest. I was learning about the power of leverage and cash and the consistency of putting dollars away, whether that was as just an individual or somebody who then, you know, years later, once I figured my way out, which was three jobs, by the way, it was working for the financial services firm, learning to do taxes, selling life insurance, which helped me learn that I could leverage my skills as an entrepreneur and have different streams of revenue, taking different gifts, but then have really most importantly, being not complacent with my dreams, right? Because I didn't, I didn't downsize my dreams, but I was able to be com complete, not complacent, but I was able to be okay with where I was and to know that the dream piece was sort of setting the setting that runway that would help me be more successful. And when I got a couple of those little lessons that came, it helped me take the bigger le leaps in life that I've been able to take, including by the buying the company that I worked for right before I turned age 30 and then growing it to, you know, seven figures. Oh, um, amazing story, really. And, and I think it will also give a hope for possibly where a lot of people are today, right? You know, they, they did not expect, you know, a year and a half of the pandemic and, and that's a hard thing to predict. And so they might be in a situation where to perhaps, you know, cope with this, they've, they've uh, created some debt, 
But given that you were 23 years old, and again, by 29, you did buy the company that you were working for and make it into a million dollar business, that says a lot, I think, of hope for uh, people that are out there that are thinking, I just can't do this, right? How do I get out? It's possible, right? Yeah. Financial. I always say financial consistency is what leads to financial stability. And when we get clear, when we get clarity around what it is we're hopeful for, and I think that's the biggest piece. So many people leap with passion and mm-hmm. purpose, but they don't leap with a plan, right? And that's really what happened to me at 19. I like, I had a whole lot of passion, a whole lot of purpose. I didn't even know what, what it looked like. I knew what I wanted, but I had to connect to those pieces of education. And that's the thing, right? This stuff isn't being taught. I can canvas when I speak in a room of 300 people. And mm-hmm. as you have, it's like, you can canvas the room and I'll say, raise, you know, show of hands. How many of you have, ha- have a degree in entrepreneurship? And not one hand goes up, but we all have this amazing desire to make an impact in the world for financial freedom, for time freedom, to make our own schedules. But we're not taught this this sense of money and how to create profits. And what do you do with those dollars? What, What is the runway? How much time do you give yourself? How do you insulate the business when a freaking pandemic happens, Mm -hmm. right? Like we weren't taught how to insulate our businesses, but all of those things come down to us empowering ourselves in this space of wanting freedoms, but coming into that place of self-discovery and learning so that we actually can be on the winning side of that statistic. And quite honestly, that's my mission today. It's helping other entrepreneurs win at this game of business, you know, Today, 39% of new businesses are started by women. And I love that we're seeing a shift in in the statistic change in regards to gender and what's happening in the world. However, the statistic of entrepreneurs failing in the first three to five years is still at 66%, Mm -hmm. right? So what's going on that we haven't changed that statistic? And that's my mission is to help people understand profitability and how when they step into business, how to clearly define it, understand it and measure it, and then crush it. And and I agree, it's so important. I I think really the fundamental flaw begins in the education system, right? Were we ever taught, you know, in the education system? By the way, you know, we were taught math, but we were never taught, by the way, you know, when you get like $100, you should put do this or this or this Mm -hmm. or take a look at all of these. And, you know, here's what a, whatever, a bank account looks like, all of these simple things. I taught my kids really, really young, um, all of these things. We opened up bank accounts when they were eight. Uh, you know, I, I, I it, you know, I think it's just important that if we're not going to get in the no, educational no. system, then please, as parents, uh, teach your kids something fundamentally basic, whether it's a portion of their allowance, whatever, whatever it is. I, I just yeah. think it's super important. I totally agree with you. And I think the first thing is not to shame and guilt ourselves around what we may not know ourselves, right? So I have, you know, two clients right now that have moved from engineering, you know, one who worked for NASA, one who um, is high, 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 highly educated in the materials engineering world, who who are moving into entrepreneurship, and Mm -hmm. with masters and PhDs and going, I have no idea about this money stuff. And Yes, the education piece of this is we're learning, you know, trigonometry, algebra, statistics, all of these things are required, but it's okay that you didn't come out learning about personal finance, learning about entrepreneurship, but lean in and take those steps so that your runway is right, you're clear about what the metrics are in business, and then you can take your gifts and talents and make the impact in the world that you're meant to make, which I think we all have a place for entrepreneurship, so... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, it, there there's there in, lies the flaw in um, even uh, uh, doctors, veterinarians, dentists, all of these guys spend seven years at a practice and a skill only to be told, good, good luck. You know, here you go. Open right. up your practice. They have no idea. And then in their situation, it's so complex. I, I work with a lot of um, physical physical practitioners who, who have businesses of that nature. You know, there, there's billing, there's invoicing, there's, you know, all of these elements that are just completely foreign. And at some times they just don't have the budget to uh, hire the necessary person to, to, to drive that position in the beginning. And so, yeah, it, yeah. it's great that they can, one, either seek mentors, seek consultants and then just really 
if the only thing you can do is, you know, set up QuickBooks through somebody who's qualified, please do that. <laughs> yes. And, and most importantly, because I too served that market for so long, right? I, mm-hmm. I owned an insurance agency, 26 years in insurance, and I specialized in the corporate, not corporate, but commercial side of the business. That was my mm-hmm. entire background. So as a trusted advisor, I would come into these practitioners' offices and I'd be told to meet with the practice manager. Oh, I'm going to quote your insurance, but you're the owner and I have to meet with the practice manager. Yep. The practice manager has no idea whether your building is owned under one LLC and you own the practice under another. And they honestly should not be making those final decisions about the investments and protections you're making in your business. And so it, it always eluded me to be able to, you know, to, to one, get confirmation from that, that doctor, from that practitioner that says, wait, my specialty and expertise is over here. And it's why I hire for this. However, at the end of the day, first and foremost, that physician or that practitioner, and that comes down to us as well. They're an entrepreneur. They're Mm -hmm. running a business. And so know enough to be dangerous, know enough to look at your numbers, know enough that you've got the right people on your team, but that you're the decision maker and your name's on the tax return, right? Yes, yeah, that's right. There's there's yeah. a place you do not want a surprise. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Now, one of the things I noticed is you do help highly motivated entrepreneurs understand their unique potential so they can achieve their big goals in less time with more ease. Can you give us a couple of examples of how you do that? Yeah. So the first way that I do that is I I always work from this premises of what I call my Envision Success Path. It's the path that I've used for three decades as an entrepreneur, and it really comes down to three pillars. It's vision, understanding the life that you want to create. What are your vi- what's the vision that you have for your life? And that is not just about money, right? Um, prosperity and that visual of what a great life looks like, a life well lived, is different for each and every one of us. So the first pillar in helping entrepreneurs and helping people design businesses is first getting real clear about the vision that they have for the life for the life that they would love. And then secondly, the second pillar is flow, which is understanding the metrics of money and profitability in their businesses. And then the third metrics would be grow, which is visibility, having conversations, those scalable conversations. Sometimes it's one-to-many conversations like we're doing here. Sometimes it's one-to-one, but where are their ideal clients? How can they let people know that they're open for business and looking for more and not just be doing that from a social media post? So it's blending this element of all three pillars together, but mostly driven from this place of vision. And I think, you know, for me, coming alongside of entrepreneurs, you know, people say, well, what makes me different in terms of, you know, support that an entrepreneur would get. And for me, it's driven from a place of consultancy, necessarily, not necessarily coaching, right? I want to be seen as a top advisor, somebody who can help them move the needle in their business. And for me, it's helping them identify what does profitability look like, right? Prosperity is different for each and every one of us. And I believe that profitability is very similar, We first have to know what it is we want, why we want it. And there's clearly a marriage between our lifestyle design and our businesses. So first getting super clear about the life we want to create, the clear vision of what profits we actually want to attract is one of the biggest questions and one of the places that I can go in and lead people. And it's funny because 90% of the people that I ask that question have never been asked Mm -hmm. or taken the time to lean in to even jot down the answers. And that question, quite honestly, starts with this. What does profitable look like for you in your business right now, right? For some people, they're in the onset of their business and it looks very different. It might just be, I just want to meet my overhead. I've got a runway because my spouse can cover the bills, right? So the onset may look different for somebody else versus a single mom who's got her own income, it's going to look completely different. So where are they at the stage? Asking that question at each stage, the onset, whether they're in the middle of their business, scaling their business, pivoting because of a pandemic, and being able to lean in and ask that question on an ongoing basis, what does profitable look like in my business right now? And it's different at each stage, right? Are you paying yourself? What is your lifestyle that you want to have look like? All of it is changing. You're giving. To me, profitability is all about those pillars. It's my health. It's my social goals. It's my giving goals. It's my family goals. It's all of it. 
And if I'm clear about my vision, about what that looks like, then I can set real solid revenue goals that align with that. You're building a business that aligns with all of that. So the first is really defining profitability. The second piece is helping people understand it. So, you know, the lemonade stand as a kid, did you have a lemonade stand as a kid? Absolutely. Okay. So think about it. First time you put up that lemonade stand, there's always a false scent of profits because the first time that we set it up, we sold each cup for 25 cents at the end of our time being out there, waving the passers by, getting the neighbors to stop. We believe that all of our coins and our paper were our profit, right? At, at four or five years old, that's what we believe. But the truth is that mom, dad, grandma had to buy the cups, the lemonade mix, help bake the cookies if we threw in a little upsell, right? But many entrepreneurs actually take that same lemonade stand approach in their business. They think that money coming in is the profit. And it's not, it's a, it, a piece has to go to the overhead cost. A piece has to go to taxes. A piece is needed for future plan expenses, those ups and downs of money coming in and out. Right. So helping people understand their metrics, their costs, their margins, their overhead, and then also planning for growth at different stages, knowing their costs, knowing their investments, knowing their margins helps them figure out the runway. I think that's a really key point is understanding a profit, right? Because you can have a million dollar business with no profit. And I mean, and so what do you have at the end of the day? A a very difficult job, right? Yes. And (laughs) And a lot uh, of stress, a lot of sleepless nights. Absolutely. And so many times we hear people say, you know, I made more money when it was just me Mm -hmm. than when I took the leap. This very common in contracting, right? That person takes the leap from mowing lawns themselves and and making a thousand dollars a week to now they have 20 employees and all kinds of equipment and their capital injection every six years is a hundred grand or more just to replace the equipment. Mm -hmm. So yes, it really does come down to get falling in love with the game of the numbers and not being in a place of avoidance and then understanding, are you, what is your personality around money? What is your mindset? Right. For me, it's helping people. It's not just money making skills. It's money keeping. That's Mm. where I think I'm different. It's like, we can talk about how to create money, but my goal is to help you create it and keep some of it. Right. And that's really what the profit piece is about. And then deciding in advance where it's going to go. Very, very good. Now, I also noticed that you're the author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Prosperity After Divorce, Take Charge of Your Finances and Create the Life You Really Want with Lifestyle Redesign Planning. So has being divorced played a big part in your passion to help women with their finance? Or is this simply uh, you noticed something in the marketplace and you needed to address it? Where did that come from? Yeah. So a combination of both, right? Um, What happened for me was, yes, I did go through a divorce, um, gosh, uh, 10 years ago now, almost 11 years ago. And one of the things, you know, that I realized was um, very quickly that everything that we built was being split in half, right? And we had been together from the age of 20 on 23 years of building a life and then making this decision together that we were going to unpack that. Well, 50% legally and rightfully, I have no resentments, like 50% is split in half, you built a life. And so, you know, all of a sudden, you're in this place of transition. And for some people, that's a planned transition, as it was for us, some, some people, it's unplanned, it might be being discarded from corporate America, it might be losing a spouse, I had a woman come up to me at a workshop whose son had overdosed and she hadn't opened her mail in eight months. Mm. And so that was an unplanned transition that paralyzed her, right? Sometimes those transitions are emotional. Sometimes they're financial. Many times they're all tied together. But what I found when I was going through that transition, even though I was the one who was really wanting this new chapter in my life, I was grieving. I was reacting to this, the circumstances in a way that I was not in tune to the fact for about nine months that my money situation was changing, right? I just was like, yep, I can earn more, make more, whatever. But half of retirement accounts were cut in half, right? So you're starting in a whole new place. And what I found as I went looking for information was that there really wasn't any, there were books on divorce and books on healing, but there really wasn't any intersection or bridge between the two places, which is you've got to redesign your lifestyle and not from a place of scarcity, but from again, these pillars of what do I want my vision? What do I want 
prosperity to look like for me as I move into this next chapter. And again, it's uncovering those social goals, spiritual goals, financial goals, all of those things, work, kids, family, um, but leaning in. So it really came from a place of one, I had to walk through it myself. And I'm one of those people that when I want to learn something, I'm going to look, you shorten your timeline by looking for a mentor, looking for information and resources. And I couldn't find one. And I thought, I never plan on writing a book, by the way, mm. but I was getting nudges, nudges, divine nudges to do it because I knew that it was needed. And it has been amazing. The notes that I get in the mail, the emails that even if somebody isn't moving through the transition of divorce, how helpful the book has been to help them reset that financial foundation. And I'm actually writing another book right now, um, which is going to be all about profitability. So stay tuned for May or June of 2022. Awesome. Well, that's great. And I think the book topic is, is a very needed one. I mean, I've currently been married now for 27 years, but I had at the beginning of my uh, journey as an entrepreneur, I started when I was 19, very young as well, and had a very um, uh, tumultuous marriage. And it, it ended up in, you know, in, in a situation where I was a couple hundred thousand dollars in debt, you know, all sorts of things that I didn't plan for one at a young age, but two based on, you know, circumstances that, that occurred that were not planned in, in, at that time. Right. You, you didn't plan for it to fall apart. You didn't plan for it to turn out the way it did. And yet, and then you didn't, I, and then I didn't plan for, you know, um, him wanting to have 50% of the company I'd built, even though he wasn't involved with it. And then at the same time, I had a business partner that decided he wanted to fight for the other half. So wow. I was going through a wicked transition where, correct, not just, of course, as you as you can probably identify in your book, the emotional turbulence that you're experiencing right. um, affects everything after that for profitability. How do you move forward? I, I actually ended up bringing on a, um, a new partner, my now husband, um, into the business. But even then, I had a period of uh, where I was almost terrified to make money because I felt like every dime I was earning was going there, right? It was always, you know, you're splitting it constantly and it was going elsewhere. And I felt like I was working for somebody else all the time. Yeah. And so until that was finalized and the transition was clean and I'd gotten over that, you know, that fear that constantly was there that I had to pay half of everything that I made to somebody else. Um, yeah, it's a, I, I, I mean, totally I think get the book it. was so I, good. Because I was yeah, like, I totally get it. And, and, we, and then you have to become more resourceful. But then you're right, you're not only dealing with the money piece of it, you're dealing with the emotional pieces, the, the lows, the highs of, of that. And, and I went through that same exact shift, right, feeling super, super secure in all areas of my life. And then when you when you're one grieving or moving through that transition, and you're trying to reset, there is this sense of protectiveness. There is this sense of la even I lost a sense of self-trust even because yes. I was in that worry state. Right. And when we're in that energy of worry, even though we're still creating, even though we know what's possible and we're resistant and uh, sorry, resilient and persistent, mm -hmm. we can be resistant to what's possible because we're in the energy of what's happening in the now. And and I'm grateful for moving through those pieces because I feel like I'm better aligned and connected. And I, and I was able to lean back into those spiritual places that I needed to lean into. And I need, and I was willing to, you know, reignite that, that feeling of self-trust again, which had kind of gone by the wayside, you know, when you're moving through something like that. And for many of us, when it's unplanned, it's even harder. So I think being able to support people through that um, with the, with the book being out in the world just feels so good. Exactly. Exactly. And it, it's why, you know, I mentioned too, that I'm an author as well. Uh -huh. I think it's important that people get the data they need for like $20, right? If that's Absolutely. all you can afford right now, especially if you're going through some hard times, um, I think books are still one of the greatest purchases that you can uh, take a look at, whether you have it on your Kindle or your iPad, or you, you like your physical books still, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. And, and again, and, and also I, to remind uh, uh, people out there, you know, if you're struggling and wondering what to do, um, it is a great place to access people like, you know, Michelle and myself 
because you know you don't have the thousand dollars per hour or whatever the rate is right but hey you, you can get a, an entire you know brain dump for 20 bucks right <laughs> right with all of the exercises that go with it right because I, I everything that I'm putting out into the world is about con conscious creation where people can read and then move themselves through a transformation so um, it's that piece of work that says, yes, you don't necessarily have to come to my envisioned workshop. You don't necessarily have to take a course. There's always more for you. There's always a next logical step. If that's more support that you need, but mm -hmm. I don't want anybody left behind. I agree. Exactly. That's yeah. it. No one left behind. I, lo I love yeah. that. And, um, something that's near and dear to my heart, um, as it's my passion as well, is you, um, kind of transfer your experience and insight as a seasoned entrepreneur and mentor, sharing your powerful strategies. You've built successful coaching practice while traveling the country, um, and doing what you love. Now I know what it took to kind of craft my life around my passion, around my kids, and to make sure that travel was always kind of at the centerpiece of that. Um, because that was part of the model we wanted to build as a family. So tell us, what steps did you implement to ensure that you could build your company your way? Oh, I love this question because Tracy, I am literally sitting here in Naples, Florida, and I just got here two weeks ago. So yeah. for me, this has been on my vision board. I have wanted to live near the water Florida specifically, I, I wasn't sure if I was being called to California or Florida. And I think the conclusion that I came to, I think where we met actually was at eWomen yep. when we were there at Fashion Island. I remember being yep. on the beach and just saying, am I home? And I remember clearly hearing the words, no, you're just supposed to spend more time here. Mm -hmm. So I know that my work is, is an East Coast and a West Coast vision. Um, but for me, it was about, you know, this desire of, again, leaning in, what is an ideal work day for me? What is an ideal work evening? What is an ideal work weekend look like? Travel has always been in, in my heart. And so I have a grandbaby that was born just over a year ago. My daughter lives in Greenville, South Carolina. As soon as I knew she was pregnant, I went and sourced into my vision. You know, I have a written vision statement. I have a vision board. I'm very, very clear. I get clear about what my future, we create our own reality. It's a whole law of creatorship. Mm -hmm. And so what do I want? And, and what am I here to do? Right. Cause it's based on purpose and, and passion, but my dreams are mine. Yours are yours for a reason. And so it was getting clear and I have been super intentional about building this business, right? I sold off my share of the insurance agency eight years ago, and I had no idea what was next, by the way. So there's been a whole lot going on in the last five years, but I truly had no idea. I thought I'll just retire. I wasn't ready to retire. I, I knew I just wanted to do something different. And so for me, it was really getting clear about what it wasn't going to look like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't going to be brick and mortar. It wasn't going to be where I had overhead, where I felt like I had to be there. It was going to be a team that was virtual. Like I can't do what I do and make an impact in the world alone. Mm -hmm. I need to have team support. First statement in my vision statement very clearly says, I'm so grateful for the team, right? Because I don't want to do this alone. I can't make that much of an impact, but it's getting clear and then inviting in. I read my statement every day. I look at my vision board every day. And here I am literally, mm. I can't even tell you how sweet this last two weeks has been. I've been at the beach every morning. I drop my son, stepson at school and I go right to the beach and I spend my time in prayer and meditation there. And I literally open my eyes and I'm like, I'm in my best life. It feels so good. Well, that's awesome. I love Naples. I love Florida. Actually, it's a place I go to at least two, three times a year. Um, so yeah, that's super, super great. And, you know, we had kind of built our, uh, especially because we had the kids. So I had my three kids, we traveled the world because I've spoken in 39 countries. So they came with me, right? This was all by design. As you say, I, again, I have a, a six step goal process five and step five is that vision board never underestimate the power i i'm real practical in the beginning right set it all up and put da, 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 but at the end then start putting all what you want into into pictures because it's important to get that visualization step in um, then people have to come see what step six is i call it the secret sauce <laughs> it's a yeah, fun thing love it but it really works. And, you know, we had our, while the kids were, you know, I'll say growing up, you know, um, 
Uh, I think we just left for Canada, right? I'm up in Nova Scotia now. We were in Malibu Canyon, California with, with you know, the, the kids kind of. And now we've moved up here for the next stage of my life, which is to care for my parents. Yeah. Um, but the beautiful part is it's still by design. Yes, there was a circumstance, right? But and I, I want people to understand this is that, okay, if I have to be there, if I need to be there, what do I want that to look like? And of course, with us, same as you, has to be on the water. So we're sitting here right on Mahome Bay, right? I have to be able to kind of, you know, launch, launch a canoe, launch a boat, have access to the water. Um, and um, in our case, which was super, uh, a super uh, weird but fun addition for us, is I wanted a storefront where others were running away from retail um, and because I'm not going to sit in the retail store per se, right? That's right. not my right. jam. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be out speaking somewhere once this all opens up again. Yeah. But um, I wanted this space because Dave and I had an art gallery in Canada, in Toronto, and we wanted to showcase our stuff. That's mm -hmm. all the retail became was, uh, was getting all of our art out of storage and literally having a place to put it on the walls. Then of course I'm, uh, you know, I got all my books, right? The books are in the store. Yeah. Um, and, and then, so and we could rent out the space if we choose to do that right now. I, you know, we just use it as a office where I get to, you know, watch the so thousands of tourists walk by every day. I love it. So <laughs> all I by design. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All by design. I love all it. All by design. Exactly. It was like, because I knew it was coming. I knew we needed to go up. And so we started the search, right? What do we want Canada to look like for us? Where do we want to be, you know, that type of thing. And, and it's funny, again, it goes back, I think, to the, what we'll call law of attraction, manifestation, whatever you want it to be, right? Is the, is a situation where a property opened up that you know, mm -hmm. rarely opens up, you know, yes. this property has been here since like 1867. Um, mm -hmm. And it's so it's gone through family generational family um, type of, you know, situations. And we had been tracking the Canadian real estate marketplace for seven months. And when I got a ping on this place, I was like, that's the one. There it is. I yeah. have to have that. <laughs> right. <I love> it. <laughs> and so um, we were exactly. in a bidding war, as is going all right now in Everywhere. many real estate places. You know, we were in a bidding war um, of, I think there was 13 of us uh, going for the place. So you just know you gonna have to pay more. That's that's all there is to it. If you really want yeah. it, just pay more. Right. That's um, interesting. It was yours. Yeah. yeah. And then it aligned. Exactly, exactly. It, it, it was just, it's a funny, it, it was a funny thing. But I, again, it always connected back to the life by design. And, and I really live by that premise. I think I own a domain name, almost to, to that, simply because you said it, we are the creators, right? Good or yeah. bad, sorry, but we're the creators of our situations. And so heck, might as well plan and create something spectacular and, and let the universe help you, right? You, you mm -hmm. don't get to sit back in your lounge uh, chair after that and, and wait for delivery. Um, it's not, you know, Amazon, right. but, That's right. That's <laughs> but right. at least it will facilitate as, as you desire it more, as you put more steps in place, as you are in different locations to see the next steps the next yeah. opportunities that will help you fill that moment of your lifestyle by design. Yeah. Agreed. It's very cool. Agreed. I love it. I love this conversation we're having. <laughs> Absolutely. Now here, here's what I thought was really cute. It says clients refer to me as an inspiring, fierce leader, a compassionate professional with passion, drive, and seemingly infinite positivity. So my question to you on this one is how do you keep positive and then infuse that into others so they continue to build the life of their dreams? Yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm just, I know we have a choice, right? Every day, we wake up and we have a decision. Am I going to wake up in gratitude? Am I going to wake up pissed off? Right. Am I going to wake up just wanting to make a difference in the world and be used? Or am I going to be selfish, selfless or selfish? Right. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, it's, it's being super intentional. When I begin my day, it's waking up in a state of gratitude. It's always having tools, right? I'm sitting here. I mean, mm -hmm. come on. 
I am a ritual over routine person. So even when we were spending an app, you know, a year and a half on zoom, I always got dressed up. It didn't matter, right? There was this ritual piece versus routine. So I put on my Coco Chanel as part of my routine to be the woman in my vision, which is serving other people across the country and globally. And if I'm showing up in a baseball hat, now listen, if I'm a trainer, great, but that's not who I am. So it's showing up in, in, with tools, I do affirmations cards, mm-hmm. right? So I've got my, you know, my Beautiful. card, I yep. just created cards myself for envision. They're going to be in envision, um, cards as well. I have crystals. I, I set the stage for the self-care for the mm-hmm. spiritual growth, for the time for prayer and meditation. I give myself the time. Am I great at balance? No, I don't necessarily believe in it, but I do believe in a morning and an evening routine. And as long as I'm willing to make space for those things, the always having a sense of curiosity and learning, right? A sense of humbleness is very important to me. So, you know, when I hear people repeat back, I did a talk with the women the other night and the feedback was amazing. And I'm just so humbled Mm. that I got to be a guide that evening and that people had their blind spots move or different perspective and they were invigorated by something. And it's an honor. It's an Mm. honor to me to be used. So I think that that is where the intersection is for me. And, you know, they say, do what you love and it'll never feel like work. And I do feel like I've hit that sweet spot this last couple of years. It's a gift. It's Mm -hmm. a gift. I I love that. And, you know, it's so funny. I've got a program called um, success rituals. It's just a download that you go through and and do exercises with. It's exactly what you said. And it's not even my rituals. I, I, talk about mine a little bit, but it's really the observance of, you know, people like Mark Zuckerberg and, and, you know, the, the uber successful people out there, what is their morning, their lunch, their dinner, their evening rituals that got them to where they are. And I think one of the, uh, you, I do just, you know, like you said, you know, right. You, you just wake up and there are mornings where you wake up and you're in a weird funk, you know, you're like, God, why do I feel like tired or listless or really don't feel like, you know, jumping up today? And uh, one of the one of the greatest lessons I learned is just decide, right? Decide Mm -hmm. then that 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 is done. That moment is over. And now now move into the decision that this is going to be a fantastic day. You're full of energy, all of these things. And it's amazing how your body, your your kind of uh, sphere, right, Um, starts to to move towards what you have just said as the intention. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, our an action is the enemy of thought. Right. So being able to, if if this, if you're hung up in that, in that space of thought provoking, like it's bringing you down, then take an action. Yeah. I love Mel Robbins five second rule, right? The five, four, three, two, one. And it doesn't always work for me, but it's again, it's tools. Like what tools do you need? And here's the, the ultimate skill is when I reach in my tool bag, as I did in May, I remember reaching in, right. My stepson Mm -hmm. was home doing school on zoom. It was very challenging, very challenging. And everything that I reached for in my tool bag, there was nothing. I had nothing. So one of the best skills is knowing when you need support, mm-hmm. right? When you don't have something that can help you man, man maneuver your way through those challenges or through the next piece, there's nothing. I, I immediately within two weeks knew I needed support. And it was so beautiful to one, give that to myself. And what I learned through the process was incredible. And I wish that I had actually had a situation 10 years earlier that was showed up like this. I obviously didn't need it then, but I needed it now because what I took from that reach of support was so incredibly powerful in more than one area of my life. So, you know, one of the biggest things is also knowing when we don't have it all figured out and being okay with that and then reaching out and learning and growing through the resources of somebody else and let them, let their gifts and talents be a blessing in our lives. I agree that, I mean, and, and very good for pointing that out for everybody here. This is life as a team sport, right? We are not intended to kind of, 
you know, row the boat ourselves. And when right. you do need help, this is why coaches, mentors, consultants, someone who has walked the path or someone who has had a similar experience, someone who is in front of you, that's why, you know, that's why they offer their services. That's why we offer our services, right? Absolutely. So we can pull you up and move you forward just like others are doing with us. I am not coachless. I'm not mentorless. I'm not consultantless. Right. I am not supportless. You know, um, there's a lot that, that, um, and I, I think you would agree, especially if we go back to that moment where you went from 600,000 and broke that million dollar mark for the first time, there is some very precise um, actions that, that, cause I did that in my software company too, that have to be done. You have to give up some control, yet you have to control different things more precisely. You have to, you know, it's a team sport at that moment Agreed. because breaking seven figures usually does not happen by yourself. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, you are, and, and having the right team of advisors or having the right staff clearly, mm. and then the right clientele and the right attitude, and then the ability to, um, you know, just like you said, be purposeful and intentional in what it is you're trying to do. Because, you know, there's also that sweet spot in business where you can make more and you're paying more in taxes and you're like, wait a minute, <laughs> you know, was it really worth the 60 hours a week? Or, you know, some people, they're just grinding and grinding and grinding and hustling and they, it, for that number. And for me, it's helping people get more in tune with that intuitive place of, well, why do, why the number? And, and then also the results of when you do go to that next level, what does it look like? Because mm -hmm. sometimes it becomes a monster in your life. Right. And, yep. and then yep. now you resent the very thing that you dreamed up and you built yep. um, because it sucks the life out of you, or you're not making conscious decisions. You're focused on that number versus the design, right. Mm -hmm. of the things that you're trying to build. So yeah, I, I agree. When there was a moment in my software company, right, that I had 15 staff and mm -hmm. and a huge overhead and a big building and, you yeah. know, all sorts of stuff. Exactly. And I felt like, again, back to that moment of I don't feel like I'm working for me anymore. I'm working right. to pay my staff. I'm working to, you know, just satisfy a customer. And that's where I realized in, in that area that I was actually doing something that I was not in love with, that I was not, um, uh, you know, didn't have a passion for, right? Yeah. And yeah. that's where that search, it's interesting, because that's where then that search came kind of in 1994-ish or 1992, and then the internet released, and that's where the game changed for me because it wasn't even called the internet back then, right? It was the I was World like, Wide Web. Oh, yeah, it was information super highway. Then it went to the World right. Wide Web, right? And and I sat there and when I saw that release, oh my God, that's where the juices went. Oh, wow. here we are. Here's that technology that's wow. going to take us to through our next era. Um, and I knew right away, jumped on board right away. And that's, of course, what has carried me all this time, you know, as a digital marketing strategist, as, you know, somebody who really takes a look at what does your business platform look like online so that it reflects your brand and things of that yeah. nature. Super. Okay. Yeah. So you're loving what you do, which is yeah, so exactly. Great. And then loving what you do. Yeah. So Michelle, I got to thank you so much for being on Reach Millions TV and sharing your amazing story and your insights with our followers. Um, what's the best way for viewers to connect with you and continue this conversation? I would love that. So I, um, you can follow me for tips, tricks, and daily inspo on Instagram. Um, and simply just at Michelle Jacobic. And you've got my name right here on Zoom. And I'm sure you'll throw it in the show notes. Um, and, you know, I, I'm very active there and um, also my website, right? If somebody would like to reach out for more support, I host a yearly event called Envision that's actually coming up in uh, the end of November, beginning of December here in Naples mm -hmm. for entrepreneurs. And I have 50 people that we bring together a year. Uh, well, this year it'll be 50 and past years, it's been more than 100. Um, but we're keeping it, you know, consciously small and intimate um, where I lead people through three days of vision and goal setting for their businesses, revenue strategy and different things. And so follow me on Instagram, come to my website and check things out. And I'd love to share with your audience around this topic of profitability. I have a really great tool. It's just the magic in your metrics. 
And so I will make sure to drop that information to you so that if there's somebody that's listening today, um, again, it's about your money, keep money making and money keeping skills, but really getting clear about what those metrics are. Um, it's a really good place to start just five little simple things that you should know about your numbers. And hopefully that'll be of service for your, um, your listeners as well. Awesome. Is there a website for that or what you've given that you, you can actually, you that? can actually grab it right on my website. And okay. if it's easier, I can also send you a link to it. So, now is, is the website, michellejakovic.com? It's yep. michellejakovic.com. Okay. So perfect. my name. Yep. Super easy. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, good. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Thanks make sure for having me. Love welcome, the conversation. Uh, Very robust. Yes. That you uh, connect with Michelle. I really want everybody to be doing that. And to help you reach millions, be sure to grab my free gifts and best resources at jointracy.com. And stay tuned to this channel for more exciting episodes of Reach Millions TV. And until next time, I'm Tracy Repchuk, and here's to your continued success.